Hi, Dalen and Jerry here with Rescue Methods. We're going to go over the CMC uh, Mechanical Advantage Build-Up Applications. The nice thing about the CMC MPD, in addition to the previous things we've mentioned, is just the versatility of the device, how quickly we can convert this system from hauling operations to lowering operations, as well as the elimination or at least the decreased value of that human error factor. So because of that integrated progress capture device, not only is it always going to assume the load when we're doing resets on our Mechanical Advantage components, but when we transition from that hauling operation to lowering, or conversely, lowering operation to hauling, we've got a lot of safety checks that are just developed into the device to help eliminate some of those potential uh, critical failures that we can sometimes commit as rescuers. So we're gonna go through a progression of a three to one, to a five to one, to a six to one, and eventually to a nine to one, utilizing the MPD, as well as the integrated swivel and side plate pulleys. All right, there's uh, some important features in the MPD that we want to point out as far as design and application. So if we rotate the MPD over and we look at the back side of it, we're going to see that there is a load diagram on the back side of the MPD. That load diagram shows us where to place our hands for the pull or the lower control point, as well as which end of the rope rigs to the load itself. It's important when loading the MPD with the rope that you create a bite of rope make it mimic what's on the diagram before opening the side plate. That way it'll be oriented correctly. Once it's oriented, open the side plate and rig the rope into the MPD. Once you've closed the side plate, you can clip the MPD into your anchor uh, in an appropriate orientation for optimal operation. As we let the um, MPD uh, flip back over to the top side, we're going to see some additional design features. The first one is the becket at the bottom of the MPD. The Beckett is a rigging application so that we can put in a change of direction pulley without uh, adding an additional rigging plate. The second feature is the orange friction control device. This toggle lever to manipulate the friction of the MPD requires a pull-out application. By placing our thumb on the side plate, our pointer finger and middle finger across the toggle and then pulling directly outward. You should feel this toggle click. When it clicks, you know you have engaged the friction control mechanism. Once it is engaged, you will turn the dial on the orange toggle clockwise or counterclockwise to reciprocally adjust friction on the rope, allowing the load to transition through that friction control point. The second design feature is the blue parking brake mechanism in the middle of the MPD. The parking brake should be fully activated and put into the locked position anytime the MPD is going to be untended with a working load on it. It's important when you engage that parking brake that you fully depress the blue lever all the way over to the keeper bevel underneath the lock icon. If it is not fully engaged, it is possible to activate the orange friction element and cause the parking brake to start to dial back. The second design application is performing a uh, rope-based lock-off tie-off with the MPD. So once the parking brake is engaged and we know that the system is not going to be tended, we will take the biter rope feeding out of the control point, run it underneath the catching mechanism, pull it back through, form a bite of rope, and do an overhand safety on the loaded line. When we're ready to re-engage the MPD for lowering or hauling operations, we simply undo the lock-off tie-off, pull the bite of rope back around that keeper brake, put it in a good operating position, and then re-engage our orange toggle after we've relieved the parking brake mechanism. It's also important to note that there are, in essence, two friction control points on the MPD. The first one is the one we've already pointed out, which is the orange friction device. The second element is the hand position on the control point of the rope. Pulling back on the rope so that it is in line with the loaded line generates more friction. As you articulate your hand towards the load, that's going to generate less friction. Both of those control points should be utilized when operating the MPD to sure ensure that the operator has a safe and effective feel for the load and the movement of that load. The first application we're going to get into is the 3 to 1 mechanical advantage. So coming out of the pull end of the MPD, 
We're going to go ahead and run this rope down to the edge of our haul lane. We're going to rig in a double pulley in this application. We're going to utilize the double pulley in this progressive buildup sequence that we're going to do because it will enable us to quickly convert that three to one into an additional mechanical advantage when we get to that point without adding additional prusiks. So Jerry's going to go ahead and grab one of the double swivel pulleys. I'm going to give him this section of rope. He's going to go ahead and formulate it into, a, into the pulley, attach his prusik onto the main loaded line or tension line, and then we're ready to haul with that three to one mechanical advantage. As we look at this system, if we count our units of tension, we have one unit of tension at the pool. We have one unit going into the pulley and one unit coming out of the pulley. That results in two units of tension at the Prusik. We have one unit of tension coming up to the MPD, one unit of tension coming out of the MPD. That one unit of tension catches the two units of tension at the Prusik, resulting in a three to one mechanical advantage. This segment is going to cover the five to one. So if we start with a three to one, and the three to one is not enough to effectively operate with a three to four man haul team, then we're going to go ahead and need to upgrade our mechanical advantage. To convert the three to one with the MPD system into a five to one, we're going to put a single pulley with a side plate up at the MPD, rigged into the becket of the device, giving us a change of direction at the hub. We're then going to run that tail back down to the double and we're going to rig it into the double system. When you rig these in, it's important to utilize the swivel based pulleys so that you can allow these systems to articulate or spin around and accommodate the right lay of the rope within the system. Because we're operating off of a becket, we don't have that ability to laterally spread out our attachment points on a rigging plate. So you got to take a little bit of time to look at the system and how it's feeding in and out of itself. If you rig these systems in and you go to haul and you have some rope on rope action or some twists, you either need to correct it through your swivel application and spin your pulley around or you may potentially need to rig it to ensure that all your lines are running as clean, straight and neat as possible to maximize your mechanical advantage. So if we count our units of tension coming through this system now, we have one unit of tension at the pull. We have one unit going into the uh, first component of the double pulley, one unit coming out, giving us two units on that side. We have one unit of tension coming up to the directional or the change of direction pulley, one unit coming out. We have one unit going into the other side of the double pulley, one unit coming out, which gives us two more additional units on that side of the pulley. That results in four units of tension transferring down that prusik. We continue to have one unit of tension coming up to the MPD, one unit of tension coming out of the MPD. That one unit of tension marries up with the four units of tension at the Prusik, resulting in a five to one mechanical advantage. All right, this segment is going to be the next upgrade after a five to one. So we have two options at this point. We're either going to jump up to a six to one or a seven to one. That decision should be made by speed. A seven to one is gonna be a faster changeover, but it results in a complex system. Complex systems, as opposed to compound systems, have some unique applications in that the ends of the system progress towards one another. So in theory, you're cutting your haul lane in half, or at least the distance of your effective haul, haul length in half. Um, so we're gonna start with the six to one, to go ahead and maximize our haul lane, and then we'll get into the seven to one in the next segment. To convert this five to one to a six to one, the first thing we need to do is remove the change of direction pulley up at the becket. We're gonna change this change of direction pulley into a midline knot. So we're gonna put a figure eight on a bite here and clip it into the be becket. While one individual is doing this function of the operation, your other rescuer is gonna go down to the double pulley. He's gonna pull out that most outer element and he's going to rig an additional Z-drag into the incoming component with an additional pulley and an additional prusik. It's important to note that as you're developing this system, you have to take a little bit of time to ensure that you've reset your first Z-drag up to the maximum edge of your haul lane so that you have an appropriate span or distance for that primary three to one um, where you put your knot in. 
ensuring that you're going to maximize that component. Then you're going to go ahead and rig in that two to one that's pulling on the three to one. So if we count our units of tension out in this compound system, we're going to see that we have one unit of tension here at the pool. We have one unit coming in. We have one unit coming out. Those two units combined to form two units of tension on this initial prusik. This is a two to one mechanical advantage. That one unit of tension carries up to the MPD, but it dies at the MPD because we put a midline knot in place. So you can see that this line, even when we pull a little bit of tension, is completely slack. This line is carrying zero units of tension, so there's no carry through. So these two units of tension on this prusik are simply going to transfer on through to the loaded element. So we now have two units of tension coming into this pulley and two units coming out. This is the first leg of our three to one Z drag. These two units of tension are going to combine to form four units of tension at the prusik. Those two units of tension that came out of the pulley are going to make their way up to the MPD. Those two units of tension are going to come out of the MPD. And when those two units of tension catch the four units of tension on the prusik, the resultant system is a six to one compound. Okay, this segment is going to be on the 9 to 1. Remember that the 9 to 1 is going to be the conversion from the 6 to 1. So if we've utilized the 6 to 1 using, utilizing our standard haul team and it hasn't been effective, to make the leap to our 9 to 1, it's almost one of our fastest changes. If we think about the system we've developed, we've developed a 2 to 1 pulling on a 3 to 1 as a compound system. Is all we're going to do to convert it into a 9 or stacked Z drags is take that knot, that midline knot that we've placed into the becket and replace it again with a change of direction pulley. Go ahead and pull tension. We can see now in this application we've got stacked Z's or a 3 to 1 Z drag pulling on another 3 to 1 Z drag. <clears throat> we have one unit of tension here at the hand, one unit of tension coming into the pulley, one unit of tension coming out of the pulley resulting in two units of tension at the prusik. That one unit of tension comes up to the change of direction and comes out of the change of direction. That one unit of tension catches the prusik and becomes three units of tension. Those three units of tension come into this pulley of the Z drag and three units of tension come out of that segment, resulting in six units of tension at that prusik. The three units of tension continue up to the MPD, three units come out of the MPD, those three units catch the six units on the prusik and become nine to one. A three to one, pulling on a three to one compound system. Okay, so this segment is gonna be the complex seven to one. Remember that probably the only time tactically that we're going to implement this system is when we need a really quick conversion to upgrade our mechanical advantage from a 5 to 1. Um, and we don't want to have that kill point in our 6 to 1 where we're managing that zero tension line or some of those other types of elements. So to gain this quick mechanical advantage upgrade, our 5 to 1 is already in place. What we're going to do is we're going to disconnect our change of direction pulley from the becket of the system of the MPD. As soon as that change of direction pulley is disconnected, we're going to form a Z drag on the non-tension side of the rope that's coming into the MPD. So this would be the pull side, this is the loaded side. As soon as that Z drag is rigged in, we're going to progress it towards the device and we're going to get that change of direction, direction pulley clipped in. Now, if you look at this system, you can see that we've got two pulleys with Z-drags that are actually working towards one another. The system is collapsing from two sides, making it a complex system. So like we discussed earlier, this is in theory reducing our hauling capabilities in half. Uh, but it's a very quick progression and it does bias what we're looking for mechanical advantage wise. So if we count our units of tension here, we see that we have one unit of tension coming into the double pulley, one unit coming out. This pulley is moving, so that gives us two units of tension on the outside there. This one unit of tension comes up and catches this oppositional pulley, which does apply mechanical advantage right here. That's one unit in and one unit out, 
which is going to give us two units at this prusik. This one unit continues down, comes into the other side of the belt, double pulley, one unit coming out. That's going to give us a resultant four units of tension at that pulley. This one unit of tension progresses up, and when the one unit of tension catches the prusik up here, which has two units of tension on it, that becomes three units of tension. So we now have three units of tension coming into the MPD, three units of tension coming out of the MPD. Those three units of tension catch the four units of tension on the prusik, resulting in a seven to one complex mechanical advantage system. This segment is going to be about hall team dynamics. So we're going to talk about the positions, the responsibilities, the manipulation of the system, and predominantly voice commands. It's very important when operating on the rope ground that whatever command is issued is reiterated to the commander. You want to ensure that all your personnel understand exactly what you want done and that you have clear assurances that things are getting done in a timely fashion when you expect them to be done. So if we start with the organization of this hall system, uh, we're getting ready to go into this hall hauling operation. We want a minimum or a maximum of three people on this hall system with one person in transition. You don't want to overload your haul team with manpower because you can have the ability to actually apply too much tension or force to the system before you feel resistance in the system. So if you put eight or nine guys on the system rather than building up in mechanical advantage, contemplating that you can just haul more with more personnel, imagine that load being caught up under a cornice or an outcropping. Those individuals or that collective haul team is going to apply so much forceful tension to the system that they will very easily overload it, cause a catastrophic failure of an element of the system prior to anybody sensing that they've done so. So remember, maximum of three personnel, one personnel in transition. This team is going to operate much like a conveyor belt. So they're going to move through the system upon verbal command. When the last person gets to the end of the hall lane, the lead person in transition should be watching them, recognize that, and loudly declare on rope. When that individual on declares on rope, he should grab the rope, start progressing with the team, and as soon as he says on off rope, rope, that individual at the end of the hall lane should loudly convey off rope. The individual who conveys off rope then runs back up to the front of the hall line and waits in that waiting position to declare on rope when the next person hits the end of the hall lane. The other really sensitive command that we're all attuned to is a stop command. Stop. As soon as the commander or any individual, Set individual safeties. on the rope ground calls stop, that's an emergency stop sequence. All people on the rope ground should reiterate that command and the immediate command following that should be set safeties. Once the commander issues the command set safeties, all of the hall team should maintain tension on the rope. No other verbal uh, command sequences should be given until the safety guy at the hub of the system sets those tandem prusiks. Once those tandem prusiks are set, and he's given them a jerk test and he's ensured safety that they're set. loaded correctly. Safety set! Then he's going to declare safety set. When the rope ground here is safety set, all personnel should repeat that command. The entire haul team will lay the haul line down to the deck, and the lead element man or the person in waiting will grab that prusik, grab that carabiner at the lead component of our Z-drag or whatever mechanical advantage system we have, and reset that system to the edge of the haul lane. Always remember to maximally set your haul components so that you're operating as efficiently uh, or proficiently as possible. Sometimes you can't always operate in a conveyor belt application and you actually have to hand over hand the rope because of a limited or reduced haul lane area. But it's important to denote that if you have a dynamometer rigged into the system and you're hand over handing the system, every time you have those subsequent jerks or pulls on the system, you're getting minor shock loads integrated throughout the system. So the conveyor belt system is a lot more effective at reducing some of those shock loads and forces on the system and having a much smoother transition for the load and the rescuer if he's tending. 